Hello and welcome to episode 12 of How to Code Games in BBC Basic. In this video we're going to be looking at how to draw the various items that start up a new level of the game. So in the last video we looked at what is actually happening inside the uh, proc setup game procedure um, but we kind of skirt skirted over what the individual procedures at the end um, that are being called by proc setup game are actually doing uh, within the sort of contents of each one of these. So at a high level we know what each one of these is doing, uh, info line obviously drawing uh, the area of the screen that controls the score at the top and the number of lives at the bottom, uh, color setup creating the color bandings, invader setup uh, in combination with, di with display invaders which is drawing the grid of aliens, uh, display shields obviously um, displaying the shields, the green shields uh, that protect our player, and then proc display base, uh, which is the procedure that draws the position of our character on the screen that we control. So what we're going to do here is actually dive into each one of these and understand in a little bit more detail what they're actually doing in practice. So if we start with proc info line here, what you can see is it's a fairly straightforward procedure. It's basically just using a series of print tab statements. Um, the print tab command, as you'll remember from previous videos, allows you to print text on the screen at a predefined x and y coordinate. So the standard print command by itself will simply print where from, from the cursor position, uh, but print tab allows you to specify anywhere on the screen itself where you want the text to appear. Now, because we're using these print tab statements in combination with the special control characters, uh, we're actually able to control not just what is displayed, but also the color in which it's displayed. So these print tab commands here, you can see that the, the letters HS for high score are going to be um, printed at the very top uh, left-hand corner of the screen in green. That's the G um, control character here, which is using the mode 7 control character for making green text. And then with the magenta control character here, we're actually going to show the most um, highest score, most highest score, the highest score, that's <laughs> all I need to say, uh, the highest score from the scores percentage dim array. So you'll know uh, from previous videos that this one is indexed from zero. So the score that occupies the zero position within that array is the highest score of all. So that's the one that we want to show as our high score. Uh, then we've got a second print tab statement here, which is going to display on the same line because it's, as you can see here, the Y coordinate is zero, but the X coordinate for the print tab statement is further to the right, so 20 characters to the right. We're going to display what the current score is. And again, I'm going to use green to actually display the word score. And then the magenta control character here to display the active score of the player. That's the score percentage uh, variable that's our actual score. Um, so obviously this value is going to change as the game progresses, whereas this value here won't change um, until obviously the game is over and potentially the player has had an opportunity to enter their, their own score into the high score table. Potentially then uh, when they play a new game, obviously that value might change. But for the duration of the actual game that they're playing at any given time, that value is going to be static. Whereas this value here, every time proc info line is called, it will update the score that's displayed. And that's an important thing to call out. Proc info line is not simply going to be called this one time at the beginning of the level setup. It will get called many, many times throughout the game um, as a result of various loops in other procedures further down. And that's what allows the score to dynamically update and be redisplayed each time proc info line is called. Uh, then um, the last thing that we need to do, obviously, in this procedure is display the number of lives remaining to the player. So we have a third print tab statement here, which takes us again um, for, uh, sorry, this one is actually going to take us not uh, not further along as far as the X coordinate is concerned, but further down the screen. Um, so 24 characters down or 24 lines down uh, on the basis of the Y coordinate here. Uh, for some reason, the, the uh, programmer has chosen not to um, not to use one of the predefined variables they already have. So I don't know whether Mark perhaps forgot that he'd already defined uh, character 150, which is the uh, control character for Cyan. Uh, but anyway, he's calling it here just as its its um, its actual value, which is character string 150, which is the same thing as if he'd used the C string character for cyan text. But anyway, that's that's what's happening here. So the lives are going to be displayed as cyan base characters. And then having got down to that level um, with the print tab statement, 
what's happening here is we're doing a simple for loop which is just saying okay for as many uh, lives as we have remaining which as you'll remember is represented by the base percentage uh, variable which at the start of the game is a value of three so for if, if we're at the very start of the game this will be a for loop that goes from one to three and for each remaining life it will print the actual um, the actual graphic for the user's base. I think that's quite a nice touch. I mean, obviously he could have just chosen to display um, the numeric value of base. So he could just have a print have statement followed by the base percentage value, which would just be a number. Um, but this is a nice touch because it's actually, it's actually showing the number of lives as individual bases. And of course, by printing them in cyan rather than red, um, that can help distinguish it to the player that that's the life counter rather than the active um, base that they're controlling. So that's proc info line. That's basically all that one's doing in, in detail. Um, then the next one that we've got here is proc color setup. I want to spend a little bit of time on this one because uh, this is a rather clever way of essentially drawing out um, how you want everything to appear on the screen without having to constantly invoke um, control characters each time you want to display something in a particular position. What you can do in mode seven is you can essentially band the screen. So you can say that you want a given um, strip, if you like a given horizontal strip of the screen to be a particular color. And anything that moves in or out of that position on the screen will take on that, that color. Um, that's actually harking back to the original Space Invaders game. Um, very, very early versions of that game, um, the actual uh, VDU screens that were used were monochrome screens um, but to get the effect of color what they used to do is they would actually put color transparency slips and stick them physically stick them to the uh, the display monitor that was used for the arcade machine and what that meant is that as the space invaders uh, on the screen even though they were only picked out in in white on the uh, on the actual visual display um, they would be seen as colors because they would be sort of coming through the uh, transparency color strips that were being laid across the screen and that's actually quite a nice way to think about how the mode 7 color setup procedure is being used here what we've actually got in practice is a series of loops and each one of these loops is basically drawing a set of control characters um, for that line of the screen and it gives you anything across that line will be in that color so you can see here that it starts with the first two lines uh, being in green and then we've got everything from uh, second to seventh line here um, being drawn in graphical color cyan Sorry, I should have said, <laughs> made a mistake there of, of mixing it up. This is the graphical, um, the dra graphical control, char uh, control characters here. So it's not green, of course, that's red. So graphical red. So sorry, the first two lines uh, of the screen are in red. Uh, then we've got the uh, the next lines in cyan, and then we switch to red again, and then to yellow. Uh, and then as far as the sort of bottom uh, bottom layer of the screen is concerned, we've got some we've got some green going on here. And then finally, at the very bottom, we've got red. Now, if you can think back to the Cosmic Invaders screen, that's actually what you get. You get a red strip at the top, which is where the flying saucer will appear. Uh, you've then got the cyan for the uh, for the first sort of batch of aliens, then red for the next and then yellow for the next. And then, obviously, and then obviously towards the bottom of the screen, you've got the green shields uh, that protect the player and then the red line here, which is, which is basically being used for the player's uh, control character, their base. So I'm just going to bring up BBEM here. So what I've done here is I've just taken, um, first of all, the graphic control characters themselves from earlier up in, in, the, in the program listing. Uh, and then I've just basically repeated uh, color setup here but without it being inside a procedure and I've also broken out some of the for loops here just to make it a little bit clearer so it's easier to read um, so first thing I have to do obviously is switch into mode 7 because uh, I've put it in mode 0 here just so you can more easily read the program um, but I'm going to put it into mode 7 and I'm going to run the program now it doesn't look like it's done very much at the moment although you will notice that my uh, my um, cursor prompt has, has changed into this green sixel here, which is, which is quite amusing. Um, that's because in running the program, what's actually happened is it's applied the graphical control character um, green <laughs> at this position on the screen, which is, happens to be where my cursor is. 
Uh, so obviously anything on that line, if I was to type in lowercase letters, you will see that I've actually gone into full graphics mode here and everything that I'm typing turns into a sixel, which is quite fun. Uh, now, if I just um, do a few sort of lines of text here, just put a load of rubbish in basically, uh, and then run, run the program again, there you go. You can now see um, the effects of the color bandings on the screen. So what's happened here is it's actually taken the text that I wrote on the screen previously. It's then we've run the program and that's effectively executed all of these print tab statements within the for loops um, down the screen using the print tab commands and everything that was previously in uh, in text that I've typed because I've invoked these various graphic control characters at various positions down the screen. It's converted those into sixels because the letters, the lowercase letters that I was using have now become sixels. Um, and not only that, but they're actually illustrated in the correct colors. So you can see I've got my cyan band of colors here, then red, then yellow. So that's that's what you would see for Cosmic Invaders. Those are the um, the sort of three bands of, of Cosmic Invaders. Then you've got some green down here for the shields. Now, I haven't quite managed to get all the way down to the final red section here. Uh, and actually, it's um, it's skipped over the, the very top of the screen there where we would have had the print tab for the, um, the red band, which includes where the flying saucer comes in. But it gives you a nice approximation of essentially what that color setup procedure is doing in practice. It's just layering the colors across. And as you can see, um, anything that happens to sort of, if you like, come into contact with any of those color bandings will get turned into those colors. Uh, if I come back, um, if I do a CLS, this time I'm just going to type in, in uppercase here. So these uppercase letters don't obviously get turned into sixels because uppercase uh, letters don't become sixels. So the only things that you'll see turning into sixels are obviously um, the, the, the error word mistake there, which is, um, which is obviously in mixed text, but most of it's in lowercase. Um, but you can still see my uppercase characters have been unaffected as far as being turned into graphical sixels, but they are in nevertheless the right colors. And that's also showing you see that red is at the very top of the screen there for where the, where the flying saucer would normally appear in that particular color band. Uh, so hopefully that's illustrated uh, in practice what color setup actually does. Um, in the last few minutes of the video, I'm just going to run through some of the other procedures here. Um, I'm going to skip over invader setup and display invaders um, because they actually uh, warrant having their own video, um, which will be the next one that I do in the series. Um, there's a little bit more going on in those two in those two procedures, um, and I'd like to spend a bit more time on them, and I don't want to rush it in this particular one. Uh, but I'll just cover off these last two here. So we've got display shields. This is a very simple procedure. Uh, it's a simple for loop that just goes from zero to three, and it creates the green shields. Um, now it looks like it's doing some slightly com convoluted mathematics here. All this is really doing is it's using the print tab statement um, in order to draw the shields at a particular position on the screen. So it's doing um, five plus the, um, uh, the, the value of the for loop multiplied by nine and then uh, 20 each time, which gives you a um, the position of the three of the of the sorry, four shields, isn't it? Sorry, zero to three. So that's actually four, if you like, four versions of the shield. And then it's calling the shield um, string, uh, which is the predefined shield uh, graphic that we had at the top in the variables list. Just as a reminder, uh, if we go to the very top here, you can see that this is the definition of the shield itself. So it's basically just a series of block characters with down back uh, left control characters and then more blocks. So that's that's really all that's um, all that procedure is doing. Uh, if I go back, sorry to oh, I've lost my place for a second. Uh, where's where's display shields gone? There we go. Yes. So display shields, as I say, is just is just doing a straightforward drawing of the uh, shields four times over uh, using this um, combination of five plus the the, the value of um, the for loop to indicate the X position uh, of each shield, and then Y obviously is the um, is the it's the same uh, each time because we want to always draw the shield from the same Y coordinate each time, but we want to shunt right um, by a certain amount each time to draw the next shield. So if you were to think about it, for the first one in sequence, that would just be five multiplied by nine, which um, is 45. So that's saying we want to be 45 across. 
um, on the on the x uh, on the x position, um, starting from 20 at y, and draw the shield there. And then the next one that comes along, it would be uh, 6 multiplied by 9, uh, which is 54, um, I think. My mental arithmetic is not amazing. Uh, and then obviously again, uh, if it was the, the next one along, it's going to be 5 plus 2, which is 7 multiplied by 9. Uh, my times tables don't go that that far. But anyway, you get the idea um, that what you're what you're essentially doing is just changing the x coordinate for the print tab statement each time, um, but keeping a static uh, y value of 20 so that the shields will all um, appear at the same um, height each time from the starting position of where you're drawing uh, the shield um, graphic itself. And then the last one that we're going to look at, uh, oops, and yes, of course, proc display base is the last one I wanted to look at. Uh, and this one is probably the simplest of all the procedures we've looked at in this video. Uh, it's literally one print tab command, and it's saying where we should draw the player's um, character, their base. Uh, now that, again, this um, procedure is going to get invoked many, many, many times throughout the game uh, because it's responsible for redrawing the position of the player's character. At the very start of the game, uh, B percentage, I think, is uh, zero. So that's saying you want it at the zero um, X coordinate. Uh, 23 is the Y coordinate. So it's right sort of at the bottom of the screen uh, on the far left. But obviously, if the player were to press the right hand control key, then the next time that display base uh, is called, the value of B percentage is going to have incremented. And so it'll redraw the, uh, the base um, graphic in a new position. Uh, so very simple procedure, but it gets called many, many times because each time uh, the user wants to move the base, uh, obviously display base has to be recalled again. And that's, again, the power of procedures. So even though it's a very simple procedure, um, it's actually doing something quite significant because from the player's point of view that's the thing that's controlling where they appear on the screen so we're going to leave it there for this video um, i hope that's uh, been an informative video for you and made a bit more sense of some of those procedures that we looked at in the previous episode and as i say in the next uh, in the next episode we're going to take a look at invader setup and display invaders uh, to really make sense of how that alien grid is being constructed I hope you'll join me for the next video in the series, and until then, goodbye.